I made over $70,000 with a single dropshipping product. And this is just one of many products I've scaled to thousands of dollars dropshipping. So do you want to see what ended up happening when I tried Shopify dropshipping for 10 days? If so, you're in the right place. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I tried Shopify dropshipping for 10 days and scaled this store to thousands of dollars per day from scratch. I'm going to show you ad strategies, daily profits, and a complete day by day analysis of how this all played out. So check this out. Here's what I made my first day dropshipping. And here's what I made my 10th day dropshipping. I'm sure you're all asking, John, what the hell happened in between? Well, let me show you. Shopify dropshipping has completely transformed my life. So trying dropshipping for 10 days from scratch seemed like a fitting challenge. But the truth is, I'm not alone. I've helped hundreds of people make money online using Shopify dropshipping, and many of them completely from scratch. So today, I'm gonna show you how they do it in this video, absolutely for free, right now. We're going to start with day number one, which was the search for the winner. When searching for a product, I had one thing in mind, and that was that this product had to have a solid foundation that I could build ads around on several different ad platforms. So when it came time to selecting a product, I immediately referred to my six step checklist which I'm going to share with you right now. Step number one, choose the right niche. With all the products out there and the pressure of finding a high performing product in such a short period of time, I knew that if I was going to succeed at drop shipping for 10 days, I would need to find a product that fell into one of these niches. And that was the home and garden or the health and beauty niche. These are two monster niches that have incredible potential for winning products. The thing most people get wrong when finding a winning product is overthinking and under testing. I knew that I had a limited amount of time, so the product that I was gonna choose definitely had to have a mass appeal. Which brings us to step number two, does this product have mass appeal? The reality was I didn't have time to do market research campaigns or audience building campaigns. So the product that I chose had to have a broad appeal that people from ages 21 to 65 would be interested in. Now this was not easy, I spent hours searching searching through my Facebook feed and just an endless cycle of Pinterest posts and a scary amount of deep dives into customer forums. By this point, I knew that I needed a special niche product and I knew that it needed to have mass appeal which brought me into step number three. Will people buy more than one? Finding a product that had potential for multi-orders was the highest on my list of product criteria. I didn't want to try Shopify dropshipping and fail. I wanted to try it and succeed to an entirely new level in only 10 days. In order for me to do this, I knew that the product had to have potential for multi-orders or the process would simply take too long and let's be honest, who's gonna watch a video on someone that tries Shopify dropshipping for three months? So let's get into step number four, which was, does the product have a high perceived value? If I could find a product with high perceived value and potential for multi-orders, I would essentially have people throwing their entire wallets at me. I'm talking $100 orders, people buying four instead of one. The potential for the product dramatically went up when I implemented this. With a higher perceived value, I was able to charge a much higher price without any customer hesitation at the checkout. And this brings us into step number five, which is solving problems. By this point, the product had sucked the customer in and the offer was just too good for the customer to pass up. But even with all these orders coming through and a lot of people buying more than one, I knew that the one piece holding this entire puzzle together was the problem that it solved. Any customer that got to the checkout and even remotely hesitated would have flashes of the problem that they're facing. And the only thing that they could picture was my product coming to the rescue and solving their problem for them with ease. And this tied directly into step number six of the entire process, which was hit them with the emotion. I could already see it. People with their credit cards ready, thinking they're getting the deal of a lifetime ready to pounce on the opportunity to buy more than one, emotionally charged, and imagining how good it would feel to finally have all their problems solved. When I went through the whole checkout process and saw this product in action, I knew that I had found a winning product. And if you wanna learn how to do exactly what I've described, check out the first link in the description of this video. It will help you get started right away. So now that you all know my secret product research checklist, I'm curious how many of you actually will implement it or how many of you have questions, 
So make sure you comment down below and let me know. And let's get into day number two, which was the miracle. I've been drop shipping for quite a while. And after taking this product through my six step checklist, I knew it had some potential. But when I decided to try Shopify drop shipping for 10 days, I never imagined this type of result. The first day was a massive success. The product showed potential and was already on its way to becoming a star. By day two, the show continued and the store was generating almost $1,500 on the day. I'm going to be honest with you, at this point, I was a little bit caught off guard. The way things were going was not a part of my original plan and going into day three, I was essentially improvising. But you know what they say, when life gives you lemons, tell life to f*** off. You don't want lemons, you want money. Bringing us to day number three, let's get this money. Look at these numbers. Just look at them. The reality is it's really easy to make money drop shipping. What's not so easy is making money drop shipping profitably. This is why by day three, I didn't even care about how much money I was making. What really got me excited was how profitable my ads were. By day three, the product was cranking a solid 6.3 return on ad spend on TikTok ads and a 3.2 return on ad spend over on Facebook. I know you may be looking at these numbers and thinking, this doesn't add up. Don't worry, you're not going crazy. They 100% don't. The reason the returns are all over the place is because Apple just recently released an iOS update that resulted in Facebook ads not tracking 50 to 60% of the purchases on the ad dashboard. Now imagine you're in my shoes. You have a complete banger product that has high potential. But realistically, you have no idea what ad sets or campaigns are actually generating all these purchases. Pretty stressful, right? All I know is I was profitable at this point. To be perfectly honest, I love a good adrenaline high and that's what I was getting at this point in the journey. So naturally, I had to push this product and I decided to throw even more money at it. Bringing us into day number four, which I titled, I'm gonna poke it with a stick. This product was an animal and I wanted to see it roar. Day number four was definitely proof of this. I now knew what I was working with and I'm sure by these numbers, you do too. Four days into my challenge of trying drop shipping for 10 days and this product was ready to take its place amongst my super winners. And I'm gonna be perfectly honest, I was ready to do a little dance with the devil. If I wanted to execute my new plan perfectly, there were certain steps I would need to take before I could proceed forward. So immediately I took action, transferring $40,000 to my PayPal account, prepaying all my credit cards and ensuring the product quality with my suppliers was up to my standard. Now I'm sure you're asking, John, why would you need to transfer money to PayPal and prepay all your credit cards? Well, after all my years of drop shipping, I've learned a few things. The first thing is when there's thousands of dollars coming in every single day, guess what? There's also thousands of dollars going out and you better have the funds prepaid on all your credit cards to pay for all those new costs. Two, PayPal does not like it when you scale products. When you start generating a ton more sales than your PayPal account normally does, PayPal goes into red alert mode. So to keep PayPal calm and provide a little safety layer for them, ensuring my PayPal account has a high balance in it provides PayPal the security in knowing that there's funds in the account that they can draw from in the case I have a high dispute rate. Typically these processes would take longer and I just allow the funds from my sales to accumulate in my account. But this product showed too much potential and the new plan had to be set in place. Bringing us into day number five, which was the plan. Things had taken an unexpected turn, but I've learned to love the unexpected. By day five, the new plan was in place and my focus was primarily on securing the best suppliers and ensuring the backend systems were ready for the scale. This period is what I call the balancing period. It's a magical time between scaling where I'll go through and clear out all the clutter that's underperforming, tighten up my back end and plan out my future. Every successful store that I've run has been built on the pillars of establishing several successful balancing periods throughout the product's life cycle. Once I felt confident that the product quality was good and my back end systems were solidified, it was time to start the aggressive scale. Bringing us into day number six, which was, I'm so freaking high. Day six was like a crackhead cleaning a house. 
it just got shit done. Coming in strong at $9,000 on the day. Like a lot of people have been asking me, how do I stay so financially stable? A lot of people think it's a gimmick, but I'm here to reassure you it's not. I'm going to show you in the next couple of videos how you can make this much cash. Wake your ass up right now, cause it's time. Early bird catches the worm. The product was ready to take off. At this point, I could definitely see that this product had potential to be scaled to 20, maybe even $50,000 per day. But to get to those levels, I knew I would have to do some major work on the back end. So immediately I changed my focus to ensuring I had the best quality product and building out long-term campaigns that would be able to generate good returns Returns for an extended period of time. This meant increasing budgets and using bid caps to ensure that my larger campaigns would stay within my KPIs. I also wanted to go through and ensure that I had several different creatives that I could launch into these big budget campaigns. And this brought me into day number seven, which I'm titling Made in China. Day seven was just like any great story. You have a beautiful princess that kisses a frog and it turns into a prince. Except this fairy tale was made in China. So of course it had its own take on the story. Let's be real. You already know what I'm talking about. The nightmare that is made in China. If I was going to try drop shipping for 10 days, I could not continue the way that I was going. After receiving my inventory inspection report from my team over in China, to say I was upset with my agent would be an understatement. The quality of the goods that were being shipped out to my customers looked like something made at a fourth grader craft fair. This was incredibly unfortunate. The hole had already been dug and my overconfident self was now going to have to figure out a way out. Uh, and this brought me to day eight, which was unfortunately the scramble. Over the years, I've been able to build a large network of agents, suppliers, and inspectors throughout China, India, and the Philippines. So fortunately, I was in a position where I could potentially get out of this hole that I was now finding myself in. With $10,000 days on the horizon and product quality scores that were fit for a nightmare, these were the kind of resources and connections that were needed to scale this product to thousands of dollars per day. And that's why I wanted to leave a special gift for all of you that can be found in the first link down below. Now at this point, my phone was blowing up. I had six different agents and three different agencies all trying to source a better product. Things were looking grim as orders continued to pour in with no real product to ship to them. There was no way I was going to be shipping the old pieces of shit to any more customers. So I had to think of the unthinkable. I was now eight days in to trying drop shipping for 10 days from scratch, and it was already looking like I was gonna have to kill the product. By this point, the product was sitting at net profits of 26%, and it had so much potential. After a long day of stressing and looking at several different crap products, I finally got a message that saved the day, bringing us to day number nine, which is known as the legend. The night before, I hopped on the Skype call with one of these agents that was looking for a new product and did a video review of the product that they had sourced. It was so beautiful. Perfect curves, elegant finish. It was clearly the product that was meant to be. But the truth was, I still had a bitter taste in my mouth from the experience with my past agent, who did the exact same thing, showing me the product, but then on the back end was shipping out a completely different, crappy version of the product that they showed me. So at this point, I wasn't taking any chances. Within three hours, I was on a virtual tour of the factory where this product was being made. Not only did I get to see the product quality, I got to see the quality of the manufacturing process too, clearly showing me that this product was in fact the product that I needed to scale even further. The day finished with a total sales amount and a new level of confidence in my product and the scaling process. And this brought me into day 10, which was the rise of the monster. With a product that I knew was great quality, ads that were performing incredibly well, and a clear idea of where I wanted to take this product. The original plan was to try Shopify dropshipping with a small budget and see how things went. But the progression of this product proved to be something completely different. Through this process, I wanted to document it to show that things don't always go as planned. 
and they certainly are not as easy as they seem. As a business owner, you need to become incredibly comfortable being uncomfortable. Because the truth is, 60% of people would not have even made it to $1,000 per day. 20% of people would have given up when hit with that product quality issue, leaving only 20% of people that are actually willing to push the limits and take their rightful place as one of the greats in Shopify dropshipping. And if you want to become one of the greats, check out the first link down below. I'm sure it will really help you. And if you want to learn how to start Shopify dropshipping, click this video right here. When it's ready, it will appear right here. And this video shows me going through the entire process of creating a Shopify dropshipping store from scratch. So if you want to learn how to start dropshipping, click this video right here. And when it's ready, it will appear right here. Thanks everyone so much for watching. My name is Jonathan Molendyke and I'll see you next time.